<clears throat> Hi, this is Kim Pinkney and welcome to my channel. Well, today um, I'm going to show you how to seal graphite and charcoal drawings on a canvas bag. And uh, this is the original one that I had done. Um, this was with uh, Daryl and I had used uh, pretty much charcoal and graphite when I created this. Um, I usually use uh, this type of bag here. It's a uh, Create Out Loud uh, tote bag. It's 13.5 uh, inches by 13.5 inches, uh, three and by three and a half inches. So it's it's a good sized bag. It's a, it, it works as a, a book bag, um, uh, something that you could put groceries in, but it's, you know, it's not that big, you know. But it's a, it's a nice sturdy bag. It does not fall apart. I've got a lot of bags like this. Um, but today I'm going to show you how I would take a um, regular pencil. And here are my pencils. And I'm going to draw directly onto it. And then once I'm done, I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge. And Mod Podge has a couple of different uh, varieties. Um, this one here is a gloss. And then this one here is a matte. So on this one, I'm going to do a matte. Um, I will show you what the gloss is looking like. <clears throat> this one, I'm not sure. I might have used the gloss on this one. Um, on this one, I did this one yesterday so I could um, have a, a, a start on it. Um, and it all it is is uh, charcoal and... Let's see, it's all these pencils, um, and this is the same type bag, it's all of these pencils, it's already dry, so like if I wanted to, you know, I, I could run my finger across it and nothing comes off. You know, you really gotta like work it in, in order to try to get anything off, so I'm rubbing it like hard and nothing's coming off. So I have another video where I show my drawing process on here and uh, I sealed it with uh, the gloss and the gloss kind of gives it a little bit of a shine. So I don't know if you can, you can see the shine on here, but it is definitely shiny. Now um, when you, in my, in the video where I have this process, I had said that um, don't worry about uh, getting out the lines and stuff like that. Like when you... Uh, coat it with Mod Podge, uh, sometimes it leaves like streaks, not in your artwork, but on it, you know, just in general, it'll leave streaks. And you'll see that as I, um, as I do the, uh, the second one here, um, you want to go ahead and get those streaks out of there because there's a possibility that it will leave like lines and grooves and stuff. Now, if you want a texture, you can, you can, uh, you know, uh, achieve that by doing that. Um, by leaving grooves. So like if I wanted grooves in her hair, I could probably just leave like a little bit of those uh, uh, lines from the, the glue in her hair. You know, so that's not a bad idea. And I think I'll try that on this next one because I'm going to have a lot of texture uh, looking things on it. So it's like when you rub your finger across it, you can feel like the bumps and the ridges and stuff like that. The do highs was on it, girl! Hi, how you doing? <clears throat> um, so, uh, so far this is what this one looks like. And um, when I uh, do the final uh, process video, um, you'll be able to see uh, the react, you know, both, um, both bags. Okay, so again, this is the type of bag that I use. And they run about uh, seven to eight dollars um, at Walmart. <clears throat> when you get it, it's kind of like this. So um, if you want, you can always iron it ahead of time. I don't do that. Um, especially if I'm going to end up washing And you can always wash it too. And that gives you um, a different texture to it. Like it, it softens it. It like takes the machine, whatever, out of it. And it softens it up. But for this purpose, it's really not necessary. Like after it's been washed, like right now it's kind of stiff. But after it's been washed, it'll be, like, really pliable, really, you know, um, 
you know, and you could always uh, iron it if you want to, if you if you care to. Um, let's see. So, uh, in order to keep this in place, it's pretty stiff right now. So, uh, if I wanted to, I could just draw on it. Um, take the handles out. If I wanted to, I could just draw on it just as it is. But I I like to have a little bit more control, and also it helps me to figure out how I'm going to and where I'm going to put my image <clears throat> so I'm going to be using an embroidery hoop and these things are pretty good you've got at least like an inch or so well maybe about a half an inch or so of uh, space between your artwork and the other side and uh, that will help out a lot when it comes to doing the Mod Podge part um, because you don't want the other side to stick um, it is a sealant and it is a glue, so it will um, hold on to your stuff. Oh, thank you. Um, I learned how to draw uh, back when I was a kid. Um, I didn't get good until high school, though. Um, I use, I like to use, um, I don't always draw from my mind. I don't like what I come up with sometimes when I draw from my mind uh, because it's not realistic. Um, so I like to grab... Um, uh, reference pictures and uh, and just like change them like if I don't like the way a person's nose looks a little bit I'll like tweak it um, I use reference pictures sometimes for shadows so like if I like a dramatic shadow um, I would look at that hey how you doing I love that you guys are coming from like all over the world and stuff and, and catching these but um, the video that I had done with the Daryl, um, it was really low because I had um, music playing in the background. And it kind of drowned out my voice, which is deep and low. Um, so um, I'm redoing this. Now, if you're going to do this and put it in a wash, um, make sure that it can withstand washing. Like uh, my uh, the laundry mats that we have here... <clears throat> they are very uh they're rough <laughs> they're made to draw draw wash and dry clothes at your own risk type of thing and they'll tell you that too um so it's nothing for uh, uh things to fall apart in a washing machine um i nearly cried when i uh pulled my uh, finished artwork from you know the wash and it was it was blue like it started out looking like this after it was sealed and then um, after I had washed it all this was like white it was the the artwork itself was blue it was like mashed together everything it just looked like crap you know like how when you submerge your finger in water and it gets all like bumpy and, and icky you know that's what it looked like on here and I'm like oh my god it's so freaking ruined but I said you know what let me just toss it in the dryer and I tossed it in the dryer and it came out like this so I had to pull it apart because when it dries it kind of like throws itself together too uh, but once I started pulling it apart it it was perfect <clears throat> so anyway um, I'm going to demonstrate that true true um i'm a i'm a poor artist so what i'm basically using is my uh vk camera microphone and um i'm going back and using what is this called uh movie maker and then i like would layer it with music um before i would also use um what was it called um i had a gopro camera uh let's see where is this beast here it is I would also use the microphone on the GoPro, or I would use uh, the mic that was on the, um, uh, what was it called? What else did I use? I used the mic on here, or I'd use like a headphone mic, you know, like one of those ones that you're exercising with, and um, fabric medium. Um, this was a question that was brought up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know about the fabric mediums. The only thing is that you can't use a fabric medium on graphite. Um, fabric mediums are, are great for um, uh, the acrylic paint. 
um, to seal it, but not for the pencils uh, that I know of. I've never tried it with uh, the fabric medium, like taking uh, like the loose graphite and uh, mixing it with the graphic uh, you know, with the medium. But um, this was a question from one of the viewers, and he says that he wanted to be able to draw on his his draw his artwork out and then seal it. So. Um, but I don't think that's what the fabric medium does. I think the fabric medium changes the texture of something. It doesn't act as a sealant. So like if you go to wash it, um, it won't wash out. I know that it, uh, I've, I've had some and I've mixed that with uh, regular acrylics. Um, but I never, I never tried that. And it's so expensive too. Um, whereas like Mod Podge, you can get it anywhere. The fabric medium, just use it as a seal. It works okay. Okay. I'll try that. I'll try that on another video. I'll see if I can find some. But um, Mod Podge works excellent. The only thing is that it's stiff. It stiffens up your junk. Um, it it's like uh, it's like using the baby oil on paper. Um, it will if you if you put it like in one area, um, you can you can see the difference between like you know, here's where the Mod Podge is and here's where the, the fabric is. So that's that downside if you want to do that. But the upside is that it's not going anywhere. Um, and I can wash it. So, um, but I know that the fabric medium definitely works great with um, other paint and stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started with my idea before I, I kind of lose it. I'm going to throw in some music uh, because I hate drawing without music. It, it's just, there's something about when you add music, um, it, you know, you, you just kind of lose track of time and that's <laughs> probably why my videos are so dang long. Um, let me find my little board here, here it is. And I just used a little um, mounting board that I've cut to the shape here and I push it up so that it gives me like a nice little backing here. All right, I'll see if I can keep it brief or at least do like a little speed thing. But thanks for stopping by. All right, okay. So this is the uh, parameters where I'm going to be working in. So I just got to make sure I stay within it. Do, 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 do. But I can always adjust and move it up and down and stuff. I'm going to start with an HB pencil and I'm going to lightly sketch out uh, kind of where I want the pose to go um, just to make sure everything fits just right. Well, you know, I have not and the discoloration I think could be from the uh, I think it could be from the pencil itself, at least in part, um, because on that, on this one right here, I ended up using, um, what was it, loose powder, and I think the loose powder, um, I, had, I had, instead of just like coating it really thick and then just like kind of working it downwards in like one direction, I had uh, kind of rubbed it in a little bit and um, it may have picked up some of the loose powder and it, it, at that point it was still like really you know I could touch it and it would like come off in my hand so that's a thought that's a thought because right now it just looks like really gray on white but I can always go back around and like throw something else around the edge or something like that uh, but that's an idea I don't know how well this would work if I dilute it um, like I've diluted other things like um, my fabric paints or fabric markers and they ended up, um, what's the word, uh, washing out. Like uh, it, it like broke down the, uh, what it, you know, uh, what, what makes it stay. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, the words for it. Um, it made it weaker so it didn't stay. Um, so I'm kind of hesitant about uh, uh, diluting uh, stuff that, that might uh, keep it from washing out. If anything, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a thought. 
see, there's one leg. Let's see, this arm. Let's see. Now, the thing about this is that it's going to be hard for me to show really nice detail um, only because this the tooth of the uh, the canvas if you've ever driven uh, drawn on canvas it makes things look fuzzy so I might have to go back and um, outline it um, because it will like uh, throw a little fuzziness to my uh, my art but I'm definitely going to see if I can try that uh, fabric medium um, I usually use, uh, what is that stuff called? Golden? Golden fabric medium? So probably kind of use uh, Mod Podge like you would, um, what's it called? Uh, like, what is that stuff called? Uh... I'm trying to think, uh, paper mache. I think that's what it, the equivalent of it is, is like paper mache, uh, using uh, that paste. Haven't done that in ages either. <laughs> and it is pretty thick. It goes on like wicked thick. Let's see. Instead of, ooh, I know. Um, Let's see, we'll give her the combat boots. And we'll give her... There we go. And we'll have... Like pants that go into... The jacket here. Let's see, about right here is kind of where I have that going on. And then, now part of this uh, pose I'm grabbing from Pixel Lovely. And part of the pose I'm grabbing from other uh, source images. Like uh, there's one that I had uh, started drawing and I was just like, I don't know what I want to draw. All I know is I want to try uh, sealing it. Let me throw some music on because it's like the sound of my own voice is like boring. Um, let me see. So I'm going to turn that on low. But um, I basically learned how to draw just from, from drawing. Um, before, I didn't have... Um, What's the word? I didn't have like a mentor or anything like that. I didn't have YouTube, which would have been so freaking handy when I was a kid. Um, if I had YouTube as a kid, I don't know. I think I'd be. I think I'd be dangerous. <laughs> um, I definitely would have been doing a lot more stuff. Um, I don't know. Um, but I pretty much learned from comic books um, because that's all I really had. I had comic books, uh, coloring books, um, and I would just draw things that I liked and then I would change it. So like I would start off with like Bugs Bunny's body and then change it to like something different. Like I learned how to draw um, uh, the profile view, like the side view um, of people from looking at my mom's, um, what is it called, uh, what was that, what is that, uh, Alfred Hitchcock. He had a, uh, a, a mystery, uh, anthology that would come out, and my mom was like a subscriber to that, and, uh, it always had his face. If you've ever seen Alfred Hitchcock step into, um, like his little logo, um, it would be like a little profile view that kind of looked like... Let me see if I can find a piece of paper. Here we go. Like this. Like this would be the lips, and then this would be this, and then it'd be his fat body. And that's how I learned how to draw profiles. I'm like, 
all the lines were like disconnected excuse me and then he would like walk into it and then he'd turn and then you know this would fade and then he would start talking and uh i'm like you know what let me try that so i took those shapes and it was just like a just a bunch of like little lines like that and i'm like i started to connect them and then i started to change them and i'd give them lips and stuff like that and eyes and I'm like, holy crap, I just taught myself how to, you know, do blah, blah, blah. So, um, I, that's how I learned how to draw. I would draw from things that I saw, uh, from other people. Um, like I would, like I came across, like in one of my live streams, I uh, talk about how I came across one of my friends had done a certain hair technique, like the Farrah Fawcett hair, uh, very iconic, um, and... I was like, how did you do that? And it was all just like another series of strokes. And I'm like, holy crap, I got to try that. And I did. And everything I drew had Farrah Fawcett hair. It all had like, it was just crazy. So I would do it until I would make it my own. And then um, I would end up changing it again. You know, learning something new. Um, I used a lot of Conan um, comic books. Uh, because that artwork had like more of a realistic body. Uh, my mom um, was a big fan of uh, things like creepy and eerie and stuff like that. So um, it had like a lot of monsters and crazy stuff like that in it. So I also learned from those things. Um, but I actually, I, I just pretty much like learned anatomy from like the, 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 the drawing books and stuff. And then I would geek myself out on other books. Um, just anything that had artwork in it. I would like end up reading it and then I'd end up drawing uh, from it. I would pick things that I liked and just kept drawing from it. And I it all looked like crap. <laughs> you know how kids artwork looks. Um, you know, unless you're like a little, a tiny little genius. Um, I constantly had the question like, what is that? What, what, are, what is that? You know, it's like, well, and then I got to the point where I wouldn't show people my art uh, because it's like, I got tired of explaining what, you know, oh, I'm drawing a unicorn. That don't look like no unicorn. You know, have you seen one? You know, I was, uh, and, and it, it was hard to take criticism because it's like the criticism was always like terrible. <laughs> you know, and I knew I had I had finally arrived when people stopped asking me what things were and were able to identify it themselves. It's like, oh, my gosh, is that blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yes, yes, it is. And then if it's not, I'm like, um, yeah, sure, sure it was. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Um, yeah, this was this is a BFG, a big effing gun that I'm drawing right here. And um, my idea is kind of like to do a uh, kamikaze pilot, um, but she's got her own wings. So it's like death from above. I want to throw like um, things like that into the picture, uh, maybe like as a tattoo, like death from above. And, you know, just make her look like she's tired, you know, she's tired of flying. She's, you know, it's, you know, instead of having a, what is it called? Um... A parachute on her back she's got her wings um, and I think the cool thing about drawing with graphite on this thing is that it it blends really nice um, I'm gonna be using a lot of my other uh, uh, charcoal and graphite on here as well because this gun is is pretty black but it has like these highlights on here and I'm like oh that would be kind of tight Um, so what I end up doing is like, I, I would, uh, have, uh, I would see pictures that I liked, but you know, at that time I'm like not drawing them, but I'm like, Ooh, that's a cool picture. Um, one of my friends had introduced me to Pinterest and I'm like, after that, I was like, Oh my gosh, I am in love with this, this, because I didn't have this sort of thing. I had to either buy magazines, um, uh, try to grab things off of TV. Like back in the day, I watched a, a lot of uh, 
Saturday morning cartoons. And I had I had some of my favorites, but they didn't come on until later. And I'm almost competing with my brother for the TV. But he wasn't he was more of an outside cat. I was more of an inside cat. Um, so I didn't have to compete too hard. Um, yeah, so like when it was daylight, he ran off and went to go play with his friends. And then me, I was inside watching cartoons. Like we'd start off, I'd start off with like, um, like Speed Racer was the, the, the morning cartoon. Um, the f very first one that would come on. So I had to start my uh, cartoon watching early. I had to, <laughs> I took my cartoon watching seriously. And then every now and then um, I would try to sit down with a piece of paper and pencil and, and draw what I see. Um, not necessarily from the, the cartoon that was playing because, you know, you just, that was studying time right there. Um, but like if I could find like a coloring book or something like that. So I, I spent a lot of time doing that sort of thing. And then um, as I got older, um, I, I would find art, art books, um, things of, of artwork that I liked. And oh, this is really coming along nice um, because I didn't think the detail would be as decent on uh, as a small image. I was wrong. It's coming along. Um, yeah. So like I would find artists that I liked. I would find artwork that I liked. And then I would just start uh, drawing from those. And I would copy as best I could, uh, sometimes terribly, um, what I was doing because I didn't know the, the basics like um, light and shadow. Uh, that came a lot later, uh, back in like junior high and stuff. Um, by that time, um, my friends had already stopped drawing. They didn't they didn't like, you know, it's like they got into other things. Uh, video games were starting to, to come out. And um, and it was very few people that I knew that, that would draw. Um, I did take uh, a few little art classes, but they didn't show a lot of the basics. Uh, every now and then we would get like a substitute teacher or something like that in the art class. And... Uh, they would show things, um, but a lot of our artwork was like the grid method. You know, like you take a you take a picture, you put it on the side. Let me see if I can. I don't think this bill's ever gonna get paid. Oh, it's junk mail. Okay, it's cool. Um, we would get like a big piece of paper, and then we'd find an image that we liked. Like we had to draw from a comic book, so we would take like um, and I I kill. I, God, I just want to just. Uh, the, um, back in, back in the day, and these things I think are rare now, um, Marvel had come out with a, uh, was a D uh, Marvel Universe type book, and I had bought one of those, and I ended up, um, I ended up, um, cutting it up for this project, but anyway, um, just to finish it up real quick, we had the picture in the corner here, and then we'd have to draw these little lines, to correspond with like what we saw here in the corner so everything we saw in this triangle we had to draw it in this side of the triangle blah 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 and it was terrible my artwork came out awful and I was like bump this and I just like started drawing freehand but um yeah for this you can erase but you have to draw really light so like say I wanted to erase the top of her head I'm using like a white pencil and uh, it's erasing you want to make sure that the eraser is clean. Um, let me see if the needed eraser will work. Like, I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, shading. It's like, if you've ever uh, drawn on canvas, this is the same thing. This is just a canvas material. Let's see, I'm going to give this a whole little coloring here. And, um... And I'm taking like the uh, kneaded eraser. And then I'm going to see if I can get like a little highlight. I think it's working. 
you just need to make sure that your eraser is clean because if you um, rub it against it, it may end up uh, going into it. So yeah, you can erase. Like this one, this is a pencil eraser. Let me see if I do this again. Um, I like this gradient here. I want to make sure that my blacks are like nice and black. And then see if I can get, yeah, you can erase. Uh, because it is still essentially pencil, um, you, you, it's hard to get away with doing it on uh, fabric though, like on uh, t-shirts, uh, because the material's different, it's a lot flimsier, um, but this stuff is stiff, especially if you don't wash it first, um, it's, it's pretty stiff, because it, this is still just canvas. I, I don't recommend um, doing too much erasing because um, it could you could wear a hole in it. Uh, that's the risk of that, but um, it's pretty sturdy. You know, if you start off drawing lightly, and let me see if it'll erase completely. Um, let me see if I can take something off absolutely completely. Um, let me see, I'm gonna hide this part. And uh, like this is uh, the erase type of thing. You kind of run into the same thing like what you want, would run into with paper um, where it will leave like a, a ghost image of what you've got here. But it's nothing to go back over it and, uh, and fix it, I think. So uh, just make sure that whatever lines that you decide to keep, um, that those are the ones you want. <laughs> <laughs> because um, there's a possibility that they won't go away completely. Let's see. You can also uh, start off with drawing um, with a light pencil instead of using like HB that's kind of like that in between you can um, I've got like a pencil that's a 8H and it's so light like if you use a light touch it's so light that you know you I might be able to see it better than you do right now um, let's see what's another pencil this one's the 8H. The hard pencils still come out um, relatively dark. Um, but I think I might have a better chance of erasing it. Yeah. So, like, if you just use a really light touch, you can you can erase your stuff. This is the kneaded eraser. Um, but, like, really hardcore lines that are on here, I think the best that you're going to be able to get is uh, uh, to lighten it. But it won't go away. So like my little stray lines, yeah, I can I can erase those out. Or if anything, you can always blend it out too. But you're you're actually kind of rubbing it in too, so it's like a double-edged sword. But yeah, um, if you think if you see things in life that you you like, just kind of hold on to them. And, uh, you know, you never know when you'll be able to uh, draw those later or, um, you know, and you never know where your inspiration is going to come from. You know, and, and uh, like there'll be somebody who will tell me, hey, I want somebody who uh, is like a fan of something, you know, or, or I want somebody who uh, I want a caricature of someone who is you know my friend who's having a birthday and so I I would like 
collect things. Like one of the things I, I had done, and I put some really awful music to it, um, was a Mardi Gras um, going away uh, uh, caricature for uh, one of my friends. She had uh, asked me to uh, draw that for her, and she, you know, she paid me for it. And I was like, cool. Uh, but what I ended up doing is just looking up a whole bunch of Mardi Gras pictures and just going from there. Um, things that have to do with Mardi Gras. So I'm a big fan of source images. I don't, I don't just like pull things out of my, you know, imagination completely. Maybe in putting it all together, I do. But I got I got to base it on reality because I know nothing about Mardi Gras. Um, I know nothing about guns, <laughs> obviously. Um, and uh, and then uh, with some faces, you know, I like to uh, collect different faces as well, um, different positions, uh, different wings, different. Let me throw her face on here so I can keep my interest going. Um, let's see. And I'm trying to decide, do I want to do, I think I'll do her, at first I was going to have her with her head at an angle, kind of like looking tough. I think I'll still kind of do that. Let me grab this. Um, I also try to collect um, pictures that have, um, that are in kind of like the same, um, shadows shadow scheme um lighting scheme so like um i try to stay away from pictures that are like extreme like lights coming from here and then another lights coming from here on a different source image when i try to um, combine them uh right now i'm using a 0.5 um pencil uh it's really got it's got this really super tiny uh lead and if you do it the wrong way, it's going to, um, it's definitely going to fall apart. Um, let's see, another, another place where I got, um, my little artistic, uh, training was, um, watching other people draw, like on TV. Um, I didn't catch so much Bob Ross as I did this other guy. His name was like Tom Hatton, uh on Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings he would draw like squiggles and uh, Popeye cartoon uh, not cartoons but he would draw whatever he wanted to draw um, people would send him like squiggles and that made him uh, kind of popular and it's just like a little whatever and then he'd make something out of it and that was kind of cool too okay here's where the details gonna start to suck uh, let's see, this image, her face is really super tiny, so I'm hoping that I don't lose too much. This is a B pencil. Um, I'm hoping I don't lose too much of the detail here. Okay. Let me just go ahead and tilt this a little bit so you can see where I am. Okay. And then I just kind of um, got, you know, different ideas from uh, other books. Um, how to draw books, drawing on the right side of your, right side, of, is it the right side of your brain? Um, and uh, I've got like a whole bunch of like different drawing books and stuff. Like how to draw anime, how to draw manhwa. Um, so it's like I find something and I geek myself out on it. And then it's kind of like doing a character study. I think that's what it's called. Um, and then I would I would draw it until it, uh, you know, until I kind of had like, they call it muscle memory. But it's not, well, yeah, I guess it is because that's how I draw my lips and stuff. It's like um, I used to draw disembodied eyes and stuff like that on my schoolwork which kind of creeped out one of my teachers. Um, it's like just eyes everywhere. And it would always be, I'd always start off with, like I'd have my like my school paper and they'd be talking and I'll be like, okay, 
draw an eye. And then I would uh, practice the lashes. I'd always find the eye shine. And then I would like do like this wagon wheel type of thing for the inside. And, you know, and I would do that, but I'd have it all over the paper. So like for 45 minutes as the teacher's lecturing, I'll have like eyes or when I we would take a test or something like that, I flip the paper over and I just draw lips and eyes and noses. And, it, you know, it never it never bored me. It was always like that was my way of doodling. It's like, it's almost like if you've ever uh, caught a uh, pink pick cast pick candle. <laughs> P-I-C-A-N-D-L-E. Even writing is hard on Sunday. Oh my gosh. Um, the, and that person would like do like little little happy faces and stuff like that. That was their way of doodling. My way of doodling was doing lips and eyes and half faces. You know, it's just like this weird half faces. You know, and they would be all over the paper. And I, it, it, it was almost subconscious. But um, I pretty much, <laughs> I pretty much still to this day, uh, still kind of do things like that. Um, I got to be careful on when I'm at work and stuff like that, that I don't draw on the wrong thing or get caught drawing. I um, shouldn't be drawing. Bad Kim, naughty. <laughs> but, um... But that's pretty much how I drew. I mean, one when I was a when I was a teenager, uh, a friend of mine and me, uh, we would we would draw um, all day long. She'd put on some music, maybe get us a little snack. Oh, she was awesome, awesome hostess. That was uh, my friend Crystal, um, and her art style was gorgeous. And I wish that she would have kept up with it because I think she would have been so phenomenal. Um, her style was like, uh, kind of like Erte, like Art Deco, uh, but she would use the 80s type of, uh, uh, icons and stuff like Madonna. And she would draw her with, uh, very simple lines, uh, very few sketchy lines. I mean, she had very, uh, confident lines and had she kept going, I think she would have gotten her proportions and everything like that, uh, amazing. Her stuff is something that I, I see a lot nowadays um, uh, from other artists. Uh, very simple. Um, like uh, one one person, um, I think her name was, uh, I think her name is, uh, I'm a subscriber too. Um, what is her name? Um, something about Art Nouveau or something like that. Um, she's got this channel. Let me see. Maybe I have. Uh, maybe another time. But um, her her artwork is so beautiful, and it, she reminds me so much of my friend Crystal. So we got the little goggles going on. Yeah, a lot of uh, my ideas evolve um, as well. So, no, 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 it wasn't a white, it wasn't a white pencil. It was a, this is an eraser, actually. Uh, this is called um, Faber-Castell, and this here is an eraser, if you can, if you can see it. Um, this is totally an eraser. And it's like rubber right here, but it's very, very stiff. So, like, I would use this for when I was doing, um, uh, what is it called, uh, like eye shines. Um, instead of using, yeah, totally an eraser. Um, like, say, let's see, what do I want to erase? I want to erase this right here. And it's really super stiff, you know, whereas this is like really flimsy. And this is kind of bulky. You can sharpen this to a point. Sorry. You can sharpen this to a point. My camera takes a while to, uh, to catch up with me. Uh, but yeah, so I've got like these three different types of erasers. Um, I've also got a, 
you know, like one of those little fat white ones too, which is the same texture as this pencil right here. So this pencil right here is pretty awesome. Um, uh, I've got a really good grip on it. Um, the eraser, sometimes when you erase, it creeps back in. But this one is awesome because it's like really stiff. Uh, it will tear up your paper like, um, what is it called? Well, not, it's not that bad. And then you've got this one that doesn't leave any dust. Um, but anyway, let me go ahead and whip these wings out. That way this isn't an all day of fire. Uh, let's see. I wanted to make her look more like a Japanese dragon. Um, like, like maybe like the dragon head was like right here. Some like elements of it. And then you have like the horn. Um, yeah, I got a lot of act. I got a lot of stuff going on in, in just one little picture here. And that's, that's some of the things that I like to do is I'll like, uh, grab different elements from different people, uh, different images, um, and then just splice them all together somehow, some way. And, uh, sometimes it comes out really nice. Sometimes it's just a little too busy. Uh, for her eyes, I think I'm going to end up using a marker because it's like, I can't, the pencil is just not doing what I want it to do. Um. Uh, this one's not going to work on. This one is tiny. This is a uh, 0 .005. And with this 0 .005, it gets into the... It's so thin, it gets into the little grooves of the, the canvas, and it just doesn't work. And I'm hoping that this isn't too... Oh, don't tell me you're going to dry out on me. Let me see. Yeah, this one I think is dried out. Oh, 0.5, I knew you well. Let me just put it upside down. Uh, let's see. So, I guess I am stuck with one of these pencils. Okay, so this one is the B. I just wanted to bring this in. I wanted her to look like a little kamikaze pilot, like a kamikaze uh, dragon pilot. Let's see. Let me get my little source image here. There's her chin, and then um, this one is supposed to be like in a, a lot of shadow, so I'm going to compromise. And use the shadows from someone else. It may change the, the shape of her face a bit. Let me see if I can get some fur going on here. Her wings are going to be a little furry, too. Yeah, I was trying to think of what I would like to see on a bag that I would like carry every day type of thing. I like... Um, See, I like drawing uh, sexy people, but strong. Like, strength is sexy, I think. Um, and it, it, I don't know. I just want to feel empowered, even though I have no power. <laughs> I want to. I want to at least like carry things that make me feel strong. Uh, 
um, one of the things that I was looking for was like, you know, what would look really cool with a dragon, um, but uh, the the Asian dragons don't have wings. They fly magically. They fly because they're dragons. It's like, duh. <laughs> I don't need a wing. Um, so it kind of goes against what I've got here. But I'm just going to use a combination of things to make things work here. Yeah, because of the... The detail here is really going to be kind of fuzzy. Um, this is if the since the canvas is really rough, it's going to be hard to get really good clear detail. Okay, so let's see. Need to get a bigger bag. And then in my source image, she's got like these really cool like dreads. Um, and I think I want to put that on there. And it just covers her boobs. And it also kind of makes her look tribal. You know, like it's just this, this feral Valkyrie is how I'm, I'm kind of uh, envisioning this character right here. Instead of her taking you to Valhalla, she'll send you there. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, I got you hooked up. Do whatever it takes to get my heroes. Okay, so so it's kind of like I'm I'm mixing multiple cultures here. Um, I wanted to use a little bit of the Japanese culture by using a a Japanese character, uh, but. I just can't get the detail that I want in order to achieve that. Um, and then uh, maybe like uh, the Chinese or, or Japanese or dragon, I was going to have that, like elements of that in this helmet. Um, let me see if I can at least incorporate some of it. And then I was going to use like wings because that's how she's uh, she gets around. Big old gun. And... What else was I incorporating in here? Combat boots. Um, I could do like the jacket, but it, that might get in the way of the wings. Or I could do like a Viking and then her being kind of like a, a Valkyrie. Okay, let's see. We'll throw, we'll throw some horns here. It probably should have been lower on her head. Um, other things that I've learned, um, um, as an artist or becoming an artist, um, like I never knew what a kneaded eraser was until someone in my, uh, junior high, no high school, I think it was high school, high school art class had showed me. It's like, yeah, it's an eraser that does blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, get out. What? And, um, they showed me that, you know, you can either tap it um, and make it lighter or you can erase completely it doesn't leave dust and oh my gosh that changed my religion it was so freaking cool so um, let's see they showed me that um, and and I think that's where I developed my love for um, 
hanging with uh, other artists. Um, that and, uh, you know, my one friend Crystal, when we had uh, just spent a summer and we just drew all day long. We would listen to, like, different music. Um, I think, I don't know if we had, if she had uh, a record player. And we listened to records all day. I think that's my, I think that's what we were doing. We were listening to, to some records. Um, and she'd put on, like, Prince. And, uh, let's see. I mean, just all kinds of stuff we would listen to. And our artwork was like, just stuff was just coming out like crazy. Uh, I was able to like decorate my walls with my artwork. It was, I, I had drawn so much. And it was almost like we were creating our own magazine. And speaking of magazines, um, she would have um, Elle magazine. You know how it, these magazines had like tons and tons of uh, ads and things like that. And, um, you know, everything was like artistic, artistic type ads and stuff like, uh, poison was the, uh, the, uh, perfume of the, of the day in that magazine in those magazines. And, uh, the artwork for poison, um, was gorgeous. Um, I, it was like a woman, she was like, oh. And, I mean, to this day, it's like beautiful and iconic. And we would use magazines like that to get inspiration. Magazines, um, um, album covers, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So, um, and we just draw. We just drew all day long. I mean, the freedom to be able to do that. It, I, I want to say this. I, I want to say it's like the equivalent of uh, Van Gogh hanging with his fellow artist and just like, just losing himself. It, it's kind of like a bliss type of thing too. You know, I'd probably like to draw this again, but not on the fabric, probably like on another piece of paper. Or make it bigger on a on a t-shirt. Let me see if my other marker will work. This is this is that point five again. It's like it'll work, but it's like it just keeps catching inside of the Let's see. Uh, come on. I don't know if it's clogged or if uh, the canvas did something to it. I thought these were new pens. Huh. All right. I'll try one of my brush pens here. Now, I know these guys are waterproof, so I'm not really worried about them washing out. Yes. Yes, queen, yes. There we go. Just want to get that detail. There we go. Now I see you. And you can see what I'm working on here. Just trying to get this stuff to come out. This is defeating the purpose, Kim. The whole point of this was to show the graphite. 
Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. Yeah, I want to end up. <laughs> I'm if I if I'm not careful, I'm going to end up uh, doing the entire thing with the pen, and that's not what I want to do. Uh, let's see. Yup. I agree. I agree. Drawing is serving looks. I like, I like drawing people who are either, you know, and it's like they, they, they try to invoke a response type of thing. Um, like, uh, looking, uh, half naked and it's like, I don't care. You know, I am, I'm, I'm boss like that. I am comfortable in my own skin type of thing. Um, I like drawing characters that have that kind of confidence. I don't like drawing so many weak characters, but sometimes that, you know, showing vulnerability um, is is not a bad uh, thing, but I, I don't want to show vulnerability while I'm carrying a purse, <laughs> you know? Not, uh, not in this case. softness or uh, sensuality but not weakness it's like this purse is not weak the artwork might be weak but the purse isn't or the what's in it what's in it is not weak yeah yeah that's it that's the ticket <laughs> something like that So that is the beginning of that. Let's see. Um, let me see if I can get these wings in their detail. I had watched this uh, Young G. What was his name? He was uh, drawing with, um, what's his name? Uh, Jim Lee. And uh, I mean, this man is a master. I mean, he, he can draw with no, uh, what is that called? No construction lines. So me, I like having a pencil. Uh, but this, this dude is so freaking amazing. I'm like, I have got to get a hand. I got to get my hands on his books. Uh, he's got these drawing books where he, uh, just draws random and I love his attitude. He's like, I don't want to draw portraits. I don't even draw my own family. You know, I'm like, Oh dog, I, I feel your pain. And it's like, I just want to draw what I want to draw. And I'm like, yes, when I get to that point that's that's you know and live off of it be able to live off of whatever it is that you are drawing um but you know for people like me I, I gotta I don't live off of my drawings so I still have my my freedom but there are times when you know uh freedom does not feed the Kim um <laughs> um and, and it's it is funny to have permission to to just draw what I what I like. It's like Kim, just draw whatever the hell comes to your rabbit ass mind, and put that out there. So um, that's pretty much why I did a YouTube channel. It's like I want to draw and have that freedom and just be able to um, have people see, you know, that you can you can do what you like. You you know, draw what you like. Um, 
and I'm doing it, you can do it too. You know, have fun. And if all things have fun. Um, one of the people at, at uh, when I used to work at uh, the Tampa Tribune, which is now gone, uh, one of the artists, she says, and I think it was the artist, things change when you're drawing for money. Um, instead of for like pleasure, like if you're like doing, they had to create ads all day long for the newspaper. And um, it, you know, it, it's like as an artist, it's like you don't get to draw what you want. I mean, you have, you know, you have like the limitations put on you. Uh, I, I need uh, a six pack of beer and uh, some words. But the uh, their true artistry came when uh, they would take those that that parameter and um, create something that never existed before. Uh, a page spread, um, you know that, and, and, it, and it still had the six pack of beer. <laughs> it just had more of an artistic look to it, and it's like holy crap. How did you do that? You know, that sort of thing. You know, to be able to have that kind of freedom too. You know, that a client looks at your stuff and goes, Oh my gosh, I love it. I will spend thousands of dollars on this campaign. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Mad Men <laughs> is basically what they were. Um, except without all the booze and stuff. That came later. <laughs> and we'll have the wings so long that they all touch the the floor here and I'm trying to um, I, you know what I should sharpen this um, give me one quick second oh actually I got another one that's already sharpened let me use this one yeah because when I had it sharpened I could get uh, some stronger lines there we go that'll work that'll do pig that'll do and um, I had gone to a digital graphic arts school and I was working at the Tribune and I wanted to uh, eventually cross train from uh, my billing uh, and ordering and things like that um, to doing artwork like them. But they told me, they looked at my stuff and they're like, we don't do that here. We don't, we don't draw things like this here. That, those days are gone. Uh, a lot of things are, are a lot of photo manipulation. Um, and I think more of what I needed to do is getting to a field where it's more the concept art. Where they still um, uh, do this sort of thing. Where you can, you know, draw unicorns and, and whatnot <laughs> and get paid for it. Unicorns with... Uh, Oh, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, she is one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, yes. Girl, you need to be like my... Uh... <laughs> you are my muse. I love Jessica Rabbit. Oh my gosh, the pictures I've drawn of her in the past. And I have none of them right now. Great memories. love Jessica Rabbit. It's like she's not afraid to have curves. I'm like, and she was, um, she's an awesome character. She's strong. She's confident. You know, she loves her bunny. She loves her bunny dude. You know, just, I don't know. And uh, Kathleen Turner, it, who did her voice, she was freaking amazing. I love Kathleen Turner. Uh, she was like a sex symbol of her day. Um, vulnerable. She was in Romancing the Stone. Um, funny. Uh, I loved her in The Man with Two Brains. Um, and it, and it, I don't know. Her characters are so beautiful and endearing.
And I think I've got one more bag where I can I can do that. But I, I one of the things about me drawing other characters is I like to throw something else onto them. So like it would be like Jessica Rabbit um, in, in a costume or Jessica Rabbit, um, you know, doing the lounge singing. You know, I'd have to put her in some sort of pose, some sort of scene of some sort. Because um, I don't like just drawing uh, characters for characters. I like throwing things onto them, um, having them doing their own thing. So I'd have to come up with uh, a Jessica Rabbit uh, doing something. Uh, holding a gun, looking dangerous. Uh, maybe having her as a, uh, like a little gangster chick or something like that. Um... Yeah. Yeah, she's my favorite. She's one of my favorites. Or, oh, can you imagine her as like Sailor Moon? <laughs> or one of those, like an anime character. I'm trying to think of a, a red-headed anime character or or somebody who's iconically redhead. Um, and, and just, uh, and just kind of like smash them together. Let's see. So, like, Jessica Rabbit as, you know, like, just giving her a different role. Still know it's her, but doing something just a little bit racier or different. Oh. Oh. There was a character called uh, Penelope Pitstop. Uh, she was in uh, the Wacky Racers. Um, and back in the day in the old Bullwinkle cartoons and stuff. I think that's the same chick. Uh, with di dastardly... Um, and uh, Muttley, the guy that's like, uh, what was it, like, uh, Catch That Pigeon, I think that's what it was. Uh, it was like a carrier pigeon that was, like, American, and they were trying to capture the secrets that the pigeon would hold, but they could never catch her. And, like, uh, Wile E. Coyote uh, going after the Roadrunner. Well, anyway, um, Jessica Rabbit could be, like, uh, Penelope Pitstop. Um, like, she's a racer or something like that. Or, let's see, I should draw Jessica Rabbit turns into a punk rock or, oh uh, yeah, oh, oh, can you imagine Jessica Rabbit as Merida or Merda, Merda, <laughs> can't pronounce her name, oh man, that would be tight, that would be cool, oh, Jessica Rabbit as the Little Mermaid, how about that one, <laughs> that would be some crazy mess. <laughs> that would be cool or Jessica Rabbit as some sort of uh, superhero uh, Jean Grey I know she's redhead she's a redhead um Oh, you know what would be cool on this picture is if I took um, some of uh, like pick candles type of uh, doodles and do like little little cherubs or something like that with those crazy little uh, uh, faces. I think that would be cute. I'll watch another uh, pick candle video and uh, see if I could find, um, you know, like a different... Uh, yeah, different faces. That would be so cool. Oh, yeah. Jessica Rabbit. Oh, oh, Jessica Rabbit. Um, like, I think Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, Josie's a redhead. But we'll <laughs> I don't know if you just change it to... Uh, trying to think of other let's see this hand is going to kill me 
um, let's see, it's bent about right here. The fingers come out. And here's where I'm going to end up erasing a lot. Just a hand at a really weird position. Okay, so let me channel my inner Jim, Jim Lee. Bring this out so that the fingers are, uh, let me see, about like right here. Okay, that's hard. This is not working. Let me try a the HB. Oh, that would be cool. Yup, that would be cool. See, that's ideas like that. Uh, it's just, uh, imagine uh, her as Ariel, and then you could draw Jessica with her chest out, but her hands are just covering them. That are so, that's so cool. Or her hair is like strategically coming out in front, kind of like how this one's doing. Yep, yep. That would be funny. It's like uh, Ariel. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, I could have either Flounder or uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sebastian somewhere nearby. Maybe not. <laughs> Laugh like her hand coming out like that it's kind of hard because uh, in my source image um, she's got uh, a skirt of some sort oh I could use a skirt she's a Valkyrie hold up wait a minute hold up wait a minute um, we'll have that kind of like over And these are like those crazy uh, pants that they would wear. I wanted to show pockets, but you can't. Uh, there's nothing here on the inner inner thigh. I'm not liking this hand. It's just hard to get really fine details here. Okay, so we'll just wing it. Wing it! Uh -huh. Okay. I kind of want these hands to billow a bit. We'll throw like a little bit aside there for the pocket. Seaweed! Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. See, it's crazy crap like this that um, I love drawing. I love drawing. Seaweed, musical notes, um, fish. <laughs> yeah, I like doing um, the pinups. Um, and I got into like airplane nose art because of the pinups. They would have, they, it would probably be like the last woman a lot of the guys would ever see. So they, they drew these ladies as inspiration to, you know, to get home alive. You know, um, back in the day, uh, was it like the uh, World War II planes? Yeah, they, they those planes would never make it nowadays. <laughs> okay, now this is that eraser I was telling you about.
Oh yeah. <laughs> this is going to be one of those drawings that I would want to cry if it got ruined. Because we just put so much time in. It's so cute. It's coming out. My wings look like shit. But that's okay. It's alright. I just can only get so much detail onto this thing. I could switch pencils. Let's see. Let's try the B pencil instead. Yeah, downside of drawing small on a canvas. Plus side is that the blacks are just beautiful on this. Yeah, I definitely want to do this one again, but bigger. I don't have a lot of room on this. This needs to be out a little further. Let me see. bring that out further it's like here's her toes the upward part of the boot yeah we'll just have it be chunky see if I can find a Little Mermaid picture in a second um, and then I'll go ahead and uh, finish up this one right here. I should put Kamikaze on our boot. Let's see if I have space here. Like this is part of the tread. Oh yeah, that looks cute. Okay, let's see if we can color this in. I'm gonna try to color it in and leave some areas so that uh, it'll have some highlights. Use different pencil. Okay. Just 
have this be a little lighter. Let's see. I'm just trying to make this a little rounder. So it'll be like the light will hit it right there. It'll be darker on this side. Let's see. Black, 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 black. Right here. Let's see. Give her a little, little Viking skirt, I guess. We'll have it come. I like how the bodice, like, comes up, like, right here for her. Right there. And I could just. But it's in shadow. We'll give her some little rounder boobs. make a cool tattoo. I think your idea with the Jessica Rabbit is going to be a cool tattoo. So if somebody wanted it as a tattoo, that would be cool. I have a, fa I have a friend that's like totally into Jessica Rabbit. She, not Jessica Rabbit, I'm sorry. Uh, Ariel the Little Mermaid. Loves, loves, loves Ariel. She has like Ariel all in her bathroom and just like so cute. see if I can get a little bit more detail in the wings with a different uh, pencil. It's like you, it's hard to see what's going on. It's like you got a hint of a wing here and I've I've already lost half of my lines here. I just can't figure out what wing is doing what what feather is doing what. <laughs> Let me see. So maybe if I can define it better. Yeah, it looks like Wicked Busy. Yep, Jessica Rabbit is going to be the next one. Now, I've got to decide, do I want to put it on like a bag or do I want to put it on like a shirt? Um, if I put it on paper, you know, I could, I could do either one. Um, and also have it, you know for posterity. There we go. Let's see if I can make her look a little bit more Asian. This would have been really cool with some, some color. Let's see. Uh, I don't like this right here. Okay, there's her boob. And then this is what she's wearing here. You can barely see it because it's dark. So, this is a like a Japanese Valkyrie. Talk about like throwing all kinds of uh, crazy uh, culture stuff in it. Uh, so Japanese Valkyrie 
and yeah I think that's what it would be or Japanese angel of death yeah 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 that's a ticket angel of death and destruction One eye looks a little bigger than the other. Let's see. There we go. That kind of, kind of evens it out. in a little bit. Let's see. Give her more of a rounder face, I guess. I want to hurry up and get to that Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So, so far, this is what we've got. I've got to let my camera catch up here. Oops. And I'm wondering if I want to put, like, maybe a little banner on here that says uh, Kamikaze or something like that. Haven't decided yet. Um, ba -ba -ba. let me bring it down some. There we go. And then, um, I'll probably like, I could define the wings probably a little bit. I think that's what it really needs is to define these wings, but it's like, it just seems to get messier and messier. Uh, let me see. Just kind of give an overall tone here. Because she's like, you can see her pretty well, but the wings are kind of fuzzy.
Let's see if I can do a little bit better here. Let me sharpen this. Oh, give me one quick second. I gotta go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Mm. I'm going to sharpen these real quick. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe, uh, let's see if I draw Jessica, I'd probably want her to, let me think, let me think. Uh -huh. I figure out what kind of pose I want to do. I could use one of the um, iconic uh, aerial poses. I've got um, one pose that I have. Uh, let's see, she's upright. Or I could just do a Jessica Rabbit pose and put her tail on her Yeah, I think I'll just do a, a few feathers um, and then the rest of them I'll just kind of let, you know, kind of fill in the blanks here. This should be enough uh, charcoal and whatnot on here just to show. But uh, yeah, the technique does work. It just, um, you just got to make sure that um, if you are going to wear it or wash it or whatever, that it can withstand um, a washing machine because 
a washing machine just ate up my blanket. <clears throat> it took the seams out and just made it even weaker. Um, if it doesn't need to be washed, you know, like you're keeping it clean and stuff, then don't wash it. Don't wash it. Don't put it in the washer. Why Why risk it if you know that the, the fabric will be flimsy? Um, um, so just uh, kind of bear in mind what you're what your uh, machine can hold or, you know, what it's capable of. Okay. And let's see. I'll go ahead and take it off of here. And I think I'll just throw something like a, I have a box. Let me go get a box. have like a box nearby something like this or something a little shallower uh, so that if I have to paint or add a wet medium let's see if it'll even fit um, I can do that and usually I would use a box that has one side cut off that way um, when I stretch my artwork over it and you see people uh, paint on fabrics and stuff like that, but they don't do this technique, which the box uh, allows it to dry faster uh, because if you have it with something touching the back of it, that this will work. When you have something touching the back of this, uh, it'll get onto that and then um, some of it will be lost uh, to, you know, just because it seeps through. Uh, with this method, all your all your paint will stay on top of your artwork. Um, you can uh, make it tighter uh, if you need to. I'm, I'm not going to make it tighter. I think I'll put like I want to put Kimikaze on there, but nah, <laughs> I'm not that I'm not that uh, vain. Um, I should have put bonsai. And just have that be. It does, it does look like kimikaze. K I M. This is supposed to be an A. Kimikaze. Well, I guess I am that vain. I am today. Okay, so her gun has been recently fired. <laughs> All right. Okay, and this poor hand, I can't see the fingers for anything. So, in that case, we'll just throw something on it. Oh, sorry. Let me bring this up a bit. There we go. Just wrap up her hand. And let's see. 
I could do Death from Above. Eh, I won't put any tattoos on her. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, coat it with Mod Podge. Um, I'm going to use the mat. And hopefully everything will turn out okay. Ew, there's stuff on this. Give me a second, i got to clean the top. Ugh. Ew. Okay, that'll work. Okay, I probably don't need that much. I really don't. But I think uh, that takes a lot of the ickiness that was... Ugh on here off of it uh let's see where is my brush i just had it there it is okay so for this let me bring the this down a little bit i'm just going to go ahead and just saturate it i probably don't need to saturate it but I just want to be on the safe side and that's probably uh, why it's really discolored it's like I saturate the shiznit out of it I want to make sure that this stuff ain't going anywhere yeah I'm being pretty extreme with this but I really don't want to. I don't want to lose this image. <laughs> now I I I like going in one direction, um, and you see how it, it kind of pools in certain areas. Uh, to keep that from pooling, um, I'm just going to uh, just kind of rub it, move it, move it around. But I'm only going to move it around in the areas where the artwork is. That way, if I feel like uh, coming back and drawing something else or a circle or something like that, I can paint that on in if I feel like it. Um, and again, all this will be uh, colored a little bit different. Like this will be like a gray tone. And I'm just working it around. because I really don't want the same thing to happen to this one as the other one. Um, some of it pooled in a certain area and it now has a ridge, a permanent ridge on it. So I'm going to, I'm terrible at painting. And I'm going to throw a little bit more on here and I want to try to smooth this out. So this is where a, a painter's hand, I guess, comes in into play. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth it on here and then I'm going to, um, you know, I'm trying to take off as much of the excess as I can. See, in the, in the color that you see, the, this, this gray tone, this is kind of what it's going to look like when it, it washes, you know, if, uh, after I wash it, uh, when it's wet, it'll look like this. It'll look kind of like washed out. It'll look gray. It'll look blue. It'll look like hell. Uh, but don't despair. Uh, throw it in the dryer. And uh, the artwork will still be there. 
Oh, look it. Don't despair. Art will be there. Ha! Ah, poet. Rhyming girl. Okay. But again, uh, don't toss it in the dryer if or washer if you think it's going to fall apart. If your washer uh, likes to eat things um, and you're scared that it's going to, uh, this is all going to disintegrate, which it won't, uh, depending on it, I, I don't know what you're going to be using, but this is the type of stuff that I use. Um, and I've got bags upon bags upon bags. I want to start a Patreon and give these damn bags away if people want them. Um, you know, just to be my Patreon. So, like, I've got this bag here. This is dry already, but I still have to wait a couple more days before I can uh, put water to it. I've got this one here. This is a mermaid that I was working on and, and just glittered the crap out of it. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I have? I've got bags upon bags. This one I started working on yesterday because I wanted to uh, uh, seal it with crayon and not seal it with crayon, but I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to use like different paints and uh, colored her skin with crayon. And I've got like a video that I had started with this one, but I think she's kind of ugly. I don't know. Um, I think I, I, I don't like, I don't know. I didn't use any heat on this at all. Um, and it was just one of those impromptu drawings that I had done. Um, let's see. Like I've got this kitty cat one. Uh, this one that I had started around Halloween time um, in October uh, that I never finished. I was uh, drawing while I was on the bus. Um, this one is another one that I had started around Halloween time. Not, no, no, before that. Um, and I was going to do like all the Zodiac animals is like uh, animal heads, uh, hoodies, animal hoodies. Um, I, had did, I had started this one on the bus and I'm kind of using my own little anime uh, manhwa style. Um, eventually I'll come up with a story and, and do something with characters and stuff. But yeah, uh, I was thinking about trying to draw 12 people. Good luck <laughs> on this. Then I got my little logo on the back of that. But, um, let's see, I've got, uh, this one here of, uh, it was going to be Nicki Minaj, but I think, uh, I kind of screwed up a bit. Um, and, but I, I had done one before, looked just like her, and I gave it away to some little girls. They're like, can I have it? I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, things like that. So, I've got bags, yo. I have got bags. I... I wouldn't buy as many of these if I didn't believe in this type of uh, fabric. So, um, okay. And I'm just wanting to make sure that it's all nice and smooth. I was going to do like a little texture around the wings, but I'm like, nah, ain't, got nobody. ain't nobody got time for that. I ain't got time for that because I do, but I don't want to. I want to do Jessica Rabbit now. Um, I think I'll do a rough, maybe I'll do it on paper. And then put it on a bag or just leave it on paper because I don't know if, uh, you know, I, I, when I, when I ride the bus, there's like people with their kids and stuff and I don't want them to see, uh, my racy side, my freaky side. It's like, what has she done to my favorite childhood icon? Yeah, I'm just smoothing this out. This won't give us any, any grief. All right. Okay. So. Um, over the course of three days, this is going to dry, and I think, let's see, this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, um, I'm going to wash it, and then uh, Friday or Saturday, I'll go ahead and show uh, both of them washed, what it looks like when it comes out of the wash, to where I'm just about whimpering, <laughs> because it's going to be butt ugly, um, and this was just one coat, I only put one quote coat on this. I could put two coats on there because sometimes I'm a little paranoid, but uh, right now it's just one coat. I'll look, look to see to make sure that all of it has been covered. And I did miss some spots, so coat number two. Let's see. And then I'll just let this dry inside this box here. Now, Jessica, 
I'm going to do with my fabric markers. Um, I've got uh, my Arteza fabric markers, haven't touched them in almost a month. Um, and you know, all my fabric markers. I haven't, I haven't really done anything since, uh, what is it called? Since Inktober. And I think I want to redo my, uh, I had started doing a Thundercat, um, uh, picture, but I didn't like how I had the, the, the Eye of Thundera in front of uh, Lionel's face. Uh, and I drew Lionel hot, <laughs> but half of his face is obscured by this damn sword. So I'm going to have him holding the Eye of Thundera, but I'm going to have him... And I should draw him just like I, I see him in the cartoon. Um, and I, I, I liked uh, that cartoon when I was a kid, uh, the original. I didn't really care too much for She-Ra. I mean, it was okay. So I'm not like, you know, all butthurt over the new uh, She-Ra. I just don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't my thing. I liked, I think I liked He-Man more than I liked She-Ra. I thought She-Ra was just a grab to try to get girls' attention uh, when I was a kid. I just didn't really care. But, you know, I liked different artwork. I like uh, strong female characters. So she was okay. I don't care that she they made her into a little girl and changed a little bit of her, uh, a little bit about her uh, for the story. And I don't mind that at all. Um, but there's like videos where people are just like, I'm done. I'm so done. There's an agenda and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, who cares? You know, for uh, for the time, She-Ra was sexy. Uh, that's, you know, sex sells. Kids like pretty colors. You know, they, they it was a nice combination. They did what they had to do. Look at me ranting. This is not one of those videos. Oh, my God. I've, 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 I've sunk so low. Anyway, uh, just my little uh, two cents. I liked She-Ra. Um, I'm, I'm watching the cartoon. Uh, bootleg. And I like it. It's okay. You know, it's limited animation, you know, and, and, and people who uh, criticize limited animation should try to do animation. And you can see how long it takes to draw all that stuff. So you kind of appreciate that someone made the effort to do something, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, I'm just, I just want to make sure all of this is covered because... I like it. I think I wear this as a shirt. It turned out good. It turned out well. Um, okay, so I'm going to put this to the side. Uh, I gotta go wash this bad boy, and we'll. I'm gonna do some searches for uh, some references for Jessica Rabbit. Excuse me, as I don't want to show off my shorts. Not the blue shorts. Since I don't want to show off my ugly little shorts, I'm going to put some ugly little pants on. Oh, God, I'm stuck in the 80s. Alrighty, so, um, Jessica Rabbit. This is going to be one crazy live stream. Okay. Ooh. And my son just bought me this big art pad. Let me pull that out. Oh, like this thing is a monster it is oh it's only it says it's 14 by 17 it's a sketch pad um, and there's no effing way <laughs> I, I could take this with me on the bus on my bike and all that stuff so all the pictures that I do in this bad boy are gonna probably end up being on camera and um, I'm gonna have to raise my 
camera up higher so you can catch the entire thing. I mean, here's the top way up here. I'd have to bring it down. And then the bottom is way down here. Oh, God. It's, uh, it's a monster. Perfect for drawing Jessica Rabbit on. <laughs> yeah, this bad boy was $9.08 altogether. Um, it was on sale. Usually its price is, what was it? She said it was crazy. Regular price, it said it was $9.99 with a 15% discount. We got it at $8.49 and then he jacked it back up with tax back to nine. <laughs> so I got 99 cents off. Uh, but it's regular price really is like $29.99. This thing is huge. Um, okay, so before I do things to this, I'm going to search for Jessica. And what I usually do is I'll look for uh, some images. Let me see if I can switch this over to my screen so you guys can see kind of what I'm working with. Uh, let's see if it'll let me. Uh, I guess it's not really necessary. You'll kind of see how I'm doing it. I was hoping that it would let me change it on the fly uh, to screen capture. It doesn't look like it wants to let me. Um, let's see. Okay, no worries. Okay, so what I'm going to look for is a Jessica Rabbit and Little Mermaid. I've got, I want to get a really cool pose. Let's see. Type this in. And what I'm looking for is like her entire body kind of looking like herself because there's, there's a lot of fan art and I'll send you a link of what um, I'm looking at. I see her on a playing card. Actually, let me turn my camera around and you guys can see what I'm looking at on the screen. Um, let me see. Oh, that works. Okay. And that's what we're looking at on the screen. Um, I like this live one right here. That one's kind of cute. Um, let's see. And it's, ooh, I like that one. Hold up. Let me click on it. That one's pretty. Um, but I like starting off with the Disney version first. Oh, it's not Disney. I don't think it's Disney. Um, let me move this over so you can see it like that. Let it focus a bit. Um, but we know that basically she has a round face. She's kind of got roundish eyes. I like seeing a one that's like a detail. That way I can stay. That one's kind of close. Ew. Um, let's see. I love this. That is gorgeous. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> now we're thinking about Little Mermaid, so let me get Little Mermaid. I need to find one where she looks. That way I don't have. There we go, animated. I want to make sure I capture her just right. Uh,
that one's pretty close. That's kind of close to what I'll end up doing. Um, oh, you know what, what would make her really hot? Because she's got this kind of bodice on. Um, let me make that bigger. Because she's got that kind of outfit on, she'd make a great Ursula. What do you think? How about Ursula instead of... But then again, you know, she is redhead. It's like uh, Ursula's... Uh, Ursula's uh, spell didn't go quite right. <laughs> Type of thing. Let's see. There are a ton of pictures. I'm trying to find like the original. I guess it's, I'm not probably gonna be able to, Ugh can't be a still but okay so I know the basics she's got these round eyes and I'll have to just deal with it like that that one's cute okay so I'll keep that one what I do is I'll copy an image and go into my Google Drive And I'll use the Google Slides. And just, oh, did I not copy it? There we go. Okay, so I've got a basic image of Jessica. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway, awkward. Uh, if I turn it the other way, then it'll... Yeah, this camera is called the IPEVO. I... I pivo, I pivo, <laughs> I pivo. I guess that means I, I I pivot. I don't know. And then it's a uh, V4K. That's the type of uh, camera I've got. Okay, so there's my Jessica, and let's see if we can find. And I'll keep that window open. Little Mermaid. Now it's a toss up between do I want to use, um, let me see, do I want to use one of her iconic poses where she's like doing this sort of thing or do I want to give her another pose? Um, Oh, oh, I could do, I could do either, I could do her either as Ariel or I could do her as Ursula. I think she'd be tight as Ursula. Um, poor unfortunate soul. Um, see how she's got that, she's got big boobs. I could do Jessica Rabbit kind of like that. Um in that kind of outfit but with her own face oh like this that's tight um like that but do her like in a sexier pose that oh i i got an idea i gotta do her as ursula everybody does her as the little mermaid or as something really crazy but i have got 
to use this pose right here. I, I'll keep Jessica's hair because I don't want to lose uh, what it is about Jessica that makes her Jessica. And she's even in the same pose. It can't get any better than this. And then she's got Flotsam and Jetsam. Those are those uh, eels. The eels could like squiggle around. Oh, sorry. The eels could squiggle around and cover up her boobs. <laughs> this is going to be tight. Okay. So this is, this is what I come up with. Um, that's how I come up with uh, original ideas. You know? <laughs> Quote, unquote, original ideas. And this beast is going to be huge. I don't know if my, my thing can't handle it. I might end up having to get my board. So give me a second. I'm going to set it up. I got to take this other image out. I got to frame this today and get this out on Monday. And this should be able to hold it, I hope. Okay. This is my ginormous drawing board. I don't know if this thing can hold this. Oh, I don't think so. I'd have to take out a page and I don't want to do that. Okay. So, to protect this, let's bring this down. And I need to find a way to make my camera sit up higher. Uh, give me one quick second. Let me see if I... Oh, no, don't rip the page. Okay. Oh, this board, this thing is huge. Um, it's gonna be like a poster size of Jessica. This is crazy. And if it doesn't work, I'll just go ahead and switch to a normal size paper. Let's see if this doesn't work. Ah. Okay. Just like the idea of this being like a giant coloring book. Okay, let me slip this out a bit. Yes, yes. Uh, the only downside is that it's going to be at an angle, so every now and then I'm going to have to tilt this up so you guys can see the progress. Um, I could move it to the side. Let me slide over. And maybe that might work too. Putting it on my left side since I'm right-handed. Uh, move the crayons. Okay, so we can kind of see what's going on here so here's the top there's the very bottom you can't see it from the very bottom so okay okay so this is just one idea and I'm wondering I'll probably just do it on a, a smaller piece of paper ah oh, no we went through all this effort Kim you're gonna freaking do it on this big giant paper um, Okay, do I, okay, I'll do it a couple different ways here. I'll do one with Ursula, this one for me, this one I'm doing um, on this one, and then the other one, I'll do her as uh, Ariel, let's see.
So I'm kind of like doing an egg shape. It's not even an egg shape, it's like a weird triangle. We got like a half moon eye. We'll bring it up a little bit higher. Uh, because I can't really find um, a really cool image of her. And what's crazy is that they've got the same kind of eyes. Her and Ursula, uh, her and Ursula got the same kind of eyes. You know, so you can either be an evil sea witch or you could be a vixen of questionable nature. Okay. And if you guys can't see it, just let me know and um, I will move my camera. Give her the little earrings. Oh yeah, she's going to make a darling Ursula. I can even give her Ursula's smile, just not as huge. be the top and then we'll just make it a little bit bigger on the bottom give it like a little bit of a tip here I might need to bring her mouth up a little bit Ursula smiles with all her teeth. And I'll uh, darken this in a, in a second. I'm going to give her Ursula's earrings too. Yeah, she's going to be Ursula. Recast it as the set. You know, like uh, when soap operas or TV shows, um, like the lead or the person uh, that usually plays the character can't do the part? Uh, playing the part of Ursula the Sea Witch is Jessica Rabbit. I'm going to draw her with Jessica's hair, but I could also like kind of do this sort of thing too. <laughs> <laughs> or I could just do it all like um, we'll do we'll keep it Jessica for now. We'll keep Jessica's hair for now. But I reserve the right to change it to Ursula's hair. Okay. All of this is closer to her eyelashes.
give her a little bit of that. What is this called? Like a, a wardrobe malfunction? <laughs> Well, she does have tentacles too. I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna go ahead and start um, outlining right now, that way you can see it a little bit better. I should outline in the colors. Uh, nah, we'll just go ahead and outline in black. And then um, you let me know which one you like best and then I'll go ahead and do it in that version. So, so far, this is her as Ursula. down the uh, camera so you, it'll zoom in a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. Working schedule. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that works. <laughs> Just get rid of the other box. Okay. And let me see if I can tilt that up a bit. And I apologize, this is like the closest I can get to uh, being straight. Um, let's see, she's also got... Okay, in this picture she's wearing Ariel's little voice. Okay, and here's one hand, it's going to be here, and let me see if I can tilt this upwards without knocking everything down again. I'm going to tilt this up a little bit more. We'll have one come this way, and the other one come kind of like this way. I gotta go look for flotsam and jetsam again. Okay, so one head is gonna be like right here, and his little tail is gonna be like there, and then the other one's gonna have his head kind of right here, and his tail is gonna be this way. So it's kind of like a yin and yang type of thing. Ying yang ying. Okay, let's see. I've probably been saying it wrong all these years. Okay, her butt's not that big. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it down so. And then I'm just gonna do the tentacles. Um, kind of how they have it 
with her crossing her legs type of thing. I'm going to have to change the title of this video. <laughs> okay. I can't remember how long her hair was. So we'll just kind of wing it to about right there. I need to bring her cheek in. And her ear. And then we'll add the earring. This is that arm. Can't see. Let's see. Can't see the hand. Still can't see the hand. Wonderful, Kim. Okay. Um, See if I could bring this closer, raise it up. Barely see the other side here. This is how big this paper is. It's nuts. Okay. Yeah, I should have did this on. the smaller paper but it looks so cute I had to have it bigger I think I'll do the Little Mermaid one um, Jessica has a Little Mermaid on the uh, smaller paper or onto the uh, my last uh, purse canvas bag
Okay, let me finish this hand here. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to uh, put her gloves on her. Because that's also an iconic uh, part of her. You know, I just noticed that uh, Ursula only has three tentacles here. is going to end up a little bit behind. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Alrighty. And now I just need to look up Flotsam and Jetsam. And I'll show you where I am thus far. Oops, I'll turn it this way. Uh, yeah, I definitely need to do this on smaller paper. Yeah, yeah doing a uh, sketchbook uh, review is going to be fun on this one. 
and this is 14 by 17. Um, her hands are holding flotsam and jetsam, so I need to find them. Let me finish up this tentacle right here. And then I'll uh, erase some of my lines here. Oh, give me a second. I have to set this down. Okay, let's see. Flotsam and jetsam. There they are. Uh, let's see. Just to show you guys what I'm looking at. Oh, I can't tilt. I can't pivot this. I can pivot it this way. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Ah, let's see. So they look like that. Look like that. They look pretty simple. One's got one eye, one's got the other, and when they get together, she can see what they can see. Okay, so there's that picture. Copy. Okay, you just need to see their tails. Uh, what do they look like? Oh, they're really super simple. Okay, let's bring the beast back. Oh, but first let's put some music on. Hey, Odd, how you doing? Okay, uh, let's see. Music, music, music. Uh, do, do, do. Be funny to draw to uh, kids' music. Let me get out of this urban Latin, and we'll do a little bit of the R and B soul. Let me change pages here because I know that we've heard a lot of this already. There we go. Okay. Just trying to get everything on here so it's still situated. I can't get to my mouse. Shoot. <laughs> everything's like, everything's balanced uh, uh, very terribly. Okay. Um, where'd my go? Uh, there we go. Uh, shucky ducky. Sorry about that, y'all. Oh, there we are. Okay. Oh, they look so pervy. Okay, it's only gonna get better from here, I guess. <laughs> I could have them looking at her boobs, but no, no. They're her pets. They're her pets. Um, now she's got, like, eels. We'll just squeeze them a bit. No, they're her pets. I gotta treat them nice. And their fins kind of do this sort of thing. They kind of spin around a bit. Okay. One big eye. Let 
Uh, what's her line? I'm not bad, I'm just drawn that way. I love that line. making sure I could see everything in the screen here and then again placement placement He's got a little bit of we'll have the eye kind of bulge out a bit. And I apologize that you guys are having a hard time seeing it. This is so big. This paper is so massive. It's hard to catch it all on my uh, screen here, but I'll figure out a way. Gosh darn it. I don't want it that. There we go. He's got a nostril here. Not, er, this is not the Ursula the Sea Witch you're used to seeing, that's for sure. I'll throw some bubbles on here. And I can even have bubbles um, cover up some of the parts here that are that may seep through the knotty bits here. this side here. We finish him up. Okay, this eye pops up. See, I figure her boo will be about like right here. Not that a few bubbles can't fix.
let's see, and um, one of the other ways that I've learned uh, to draw um, or teach myself how to draw is that I try, I try to break it down into like the basic shapes. Um, uh, if I see triangles, uh, rectangles, things like that, I'll throw that on there, especially if I'm having a hard time uh, trying to trying to grasp grasp uh, you know the likeness of whatever I'm doing. Let's see. I was going to have him come around here, but I don't think that's going to happen. Let's see. I could have his tail come back around like this. And then, um, wherever the, uh, let's see, I'm thinking, um, I think they're supposed to be kind of like electric eels, maybe. So I can make like a, a spark that uh, makes like a heart shape. Sometimes I throw the cheesiness like crazy on in here. Uh, if you can't be cheesy in one of your favorite cartoons, Queenie can you? And then just uh, remembering to throw S curves into things, um, noticing relationships between things. And I didn't get that eye to notice uh, spatial differences like this is closer or this is further away, this is tiny, uh, you know, things like that. I didn't have anybody to teach me that. I had to kind of develop that on my own. Um, but now we've got like YouTube and we've got all kinds of artists that, um, Linda, Linda Paw, I guess you can say. And, uh, you know, you can learn a lot by watching these guys, uh, watching people, different people draw, um, and even be inspired by other people. Um, so I never like just kept to myself when it came to uh, teaching myself how to draw. I would definitely um, look around at uh, what other people have done, how they learned to draw, um, their techniques, um, you know, uh, hanging back on your pencil. It's like little things like that um, I learned later on uh, through watching other people, like uh, going back on your pencil so far back that, uh, you know, it's the weight of the pencil that gives you the line, that, that light line. Um, and then coming up on it, I've always, I've always been up on it uh, to control it. You know, you're like that when you, uh, you write letters and stuff like that. Um... And I'm wondering if learning how to cursive write may have helped a, bl a little bit too with getting different uh, strokes and um, different lines and things like that. But if you can draw a circle, a triangle, um, you know, the basic shapes, uh, you'll be able to, and, and then you, you once you draw those basic shapes, you just round them off into whatever uh, shape that you're trying to go for. So it's like you're taking a square and you're uh, molding it. So I learned how to I learned how to do that um, a little bit later. Um, 
when I had always started out, I always started out with the eyes. Um, and if the picture, if the face didn't look right, I pretty much scrapped the damn thing. I was like, no, 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 no. Let's see. Uh, but now it's like I, I like to do um, like a full body and then I worry about the face. Um, I've got a little bit more confidence that my face is going to turn out the way I, I want. And if it doesn't, thank God for erasers. <laughs> you know? um, um, they're a wonderful invention. And then I just um, allow myself, before I used to like really just beat myself up when I couldn't get a likeness right, when I, uh, you know, I allow myself um, a measure of messing stuff up. Um, uh, and and I, I found that when I was learning how to do caricatures, uh, which is was co totally different from what I had I had uh, was used to drawing. Um, you know, I I had to uh, be kind to myself. You know, I my my caricatures didn't come out like um, like the guys that had hired me. They had been doing it for years, and where I has just came in and started doing it for a few minutes. <laughs> you know. They've been doing it for decades, and I've only been doing it for, oh, like five, ten minutes. <laughs> and so um, I found that I didn't like complete exaggeration. Um, I liked having a bit of portrait to it. I liked, uh, and that, but it helped me, though. Um, I got to the point where I, I did exaggerate, but I didn't go absolutely bonkers with it. And uh, bonkers is what a lot of the guys do. And they get to, some guys have gotten to the point where uh, they do everybody like absolutely batshit crazy looking. Um, and like, uh, guys are really good sports. Men, when you draw men, um, I've never had a guy say, oh, that doesn't, I've had him say kind of like, it doesn't look like me, or it's like, oh my God, that really does look like me, you know, it, as a cartoon. But um, women, oh my gosh, um, we, we, have an, we have an idea of ourselves, and I totally got it, you know, why, why women like really get, would get really pissed off if you drew them like super ugly because <laughs> one guy did me like really super ugly uh oh my gosh and i was like almost in tears after i saw it it was so ugly um uh, and everybody was in and, and when you're getting drawn um and he was having a blast with it he drew me like a frankenstein and I was like, I had this image of myself and I was like, man, is this how you see me? I'm like, dude, well, so much for that crush on you, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like nobody wants to be drawn. No woman wants to be drawn ugly. Uh, unless you're like really super secure in, in the way you look. Nobody wants to be captured like that. Um, and men, uh, some of the artists that I came across, the caricature artists, didn't seem to get that. It's like, uh, no, dude, that, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Um, so now when I draw people, because I've been drawn ugly, and I've been drawn pretty, that's what gets me. There was one that... Um, uh, the guy that hired me uh, at Bush Gardens um, to do caricatures, um, he drew me so dang well. I'm like, now that's the cartoon I see myself as. 
and I lost it. I'm like, no, 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 no. It was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous uh, caricature. Um, he distorted the right stuff. He didn't just like go balls out and just like mess it up. Um, not like this other guy. He, I mean, I had crooked teeth. He just made them even worse. Um, and then he broke out his, uh, his, and then he, had, oh, but he had so many people watching him and they were just cackling. They were laughing so hard. And then I was like, I couldn't wait to see it. I thought it was going to be so good because I've had one done before that looked really great. And I was just heartbroken. I was like, man, dude, I was, my, I, my feelings were hurt. <laughs> and it's supposed to be a cartoon. It's not supposed to be a glamour shot. And I had to keep telling myself that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so from here on out, I don't draw people, I don't draw women uh, like this. I don't draw women like Flotsam or Jetsam, especially if they look like Flotsam or Jetsam. I'll draw them like this with a few hints of this. <laughs> you got to learn the hard way. Um, and, they, and the sad thing is he didn't have to do me like that. Um, he could have totally, um, and nobody sat for him after that because it was so bad. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I'm like, and I think I laughed from the shock of it because, you know, like you have an idea of what you look like, um, but you really don't have an idea of what other people think you look like. And once that, those two uh, collide, it's like, wow, wow. <laughs> I've seen um, some caricatures that were done so well that people want to get plastic surgery to look like their character, uh, the caricature. Um, and so, um, what I learned from being drawn so horribly is that, um, I try to find the beauty of, um, the person that's sitting for me. Uh, they may not be, um, like a supermodel or anything like that. Uh, they could be like, uh, older, you know, and never had a caricature done. Um, uh, things like that, but a caricature doesn't have to look ugly. It doesn't have to be distorted to all ends. Uh, my favorite caricatures that I do, uh, they are distorted, but they still kind of look like portraits. They look like the person. It's like the person's face or head, uh, but it's not like it's not like crazy distorted. You can see that it was definitely this one particular person. And, um, I just made him with a bigger head, um, and doing his thing, you know, whatever they're doing. Uh, I had one guy that was a, uh, what's the word? Um, band director. And I've got a video of that, uh, in my caricatures, uh, uh, playlist. And, I, I didn't go crazy on him um, because that's not my style. I, just, I, I realized that I just don't like doing like the Ren and Stimpy type of caricatures. Um, if you know who those characters are, you know, where they have the crazy big eye. Um, you know, I, I'm more of like the Don Bluth uh, or not. Yeah, I think I could say that like a, a Don Bluth type of caricature artist where you, you've got like all these little curves and stuff, but I take the curves that you have and I don't take the worst ones. Like if you've got um, a thing about your uh, braces and that's one of the things we, it was hard to get people to smile, especially when they had braces. And um, I would draw them not with their crooked teeth, but how their teeth would look when they came, you know, when they would come off, uh, those that would, um, open their mouths and let me, you know, capture some of that, that smile. And then there's some that, that definitely wouldn't, but the little kids that have braces, uh, we would do like really fun things. Like, um, we, we, uh, make their braces look awesome, you know, or let them, you know, pick out the colors that they want, uh, on the bands and stuff like that. 
Um, and uh, so it's like, how old was I? Gosh, I think I was in my 30s. In my 30s, I had to re learn how to redraw or learn how to draw in a different way. And that was fun. It was fun. And to this day, and that, and that was one of the pet peeves of um, one of the guys that hired me is that they teach people how to do caricatures and then they go off and do their own thing, <laughs> you know, and make money. Um, it was like, what can we say? You were a really good teacher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what can you say? Okay, now I'm trying to figure out how his... Because I want it to come up. Here we go. I want it to come up this way and then wrap back around. Just so I can keep her hand the same. Um, let's see. Ursula doesn't have anything on her wrist, but Jessica has gloves. So um, I'm trying to decide do I put the gloves on her to keep her looking like Jessica Rabbit? Or do I leave the gloves off so she looks still like. Um, Ursula and so I'm wondering okay let's see this is what it'll look like with the gloves on I definitely will throw some things here to help me um, mask some of my mistakes and I think the gloves come all the way up to here so I'd have to put like maybe let's see I can't do the glove there but her hand would end up being colored so it really doesn't look like it matters too much. So I'll go ahead and put the gloves on. Uh, color in his mouth a little bit he's got like two tones like this this is darker and this is a little lighter and his tongue is even lighter but it's like a gray tone definitely look it looks icky and then this guy okay so let me go ahead and outline these guys here Yeah, it definitely helped um, learning how to draw, uh, finding people who draw in the way that I want to end up drawing. And uh, that definitely, definitely helped me with my uh, learning how to draw. Um, I learned a lot from like Jim Lee, watching um, uh, different cartoons. Sometimes I'd be able to catch stills. Um, in like the uh, TV guide or whatever TV guide Wow I remember when that was the thing it was like a little digest it would tell you everything about the show now you could like go online and and uh, I can't draw a circle <laughs> uh, you can go online and look at their um, their website and find out and then you got fan sites and stuff like that I like I wish I had that when I was a kid we would have to buy a TV guide and I would catch like whatever was popular on the cover they had like the A-Team and Dukes of Hazard, and I'd wish that I had like money as a kid I would have bought all that stuff and just like kept it and used it as a photo reference especially like the Dukes of Hazzard I used to love that show BJ and the Bear and um, I am really dating myself you guys are like huh who what uh, Charlie's Angels that used to be the big thing too they were on the mag they were on uh, uh, on the TV guide and now when I say TV Guide, you, you'll probably be thinking, oh, it's that uh, 
that one channel that you go to to see what's playing or about to pop up. But imagine that they had uh, everything already lined up. If it was a repeat, it would tell you it was a rerun. Um, and then every now and then they would have like a picture from the show um, in like one of the insets of, uh, so it was like really super cool. Okay, anyway, but now it's something completely different, I think. Uh, back when TV Guide was cool and you needed it to find out what was going to be playing or what was not going to be playing and it was kind of hit or miss when it came to cartoons because they uh, they would have cartoons playing or not you know oh it's, it's scheduled to be blah 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 but they could interrupt it at any time for adult stuff so I took my Saturday morning cartoon watching seriously. <laughs> um, I used to like to uh, watch Buzz Lightyear uh, when he had his little cartoon. Um, I loved the Aladdin cartoon. I liked the um, uh, Hercules. Hercules cartoon was cute too. His character, his friends were cute. Um, Yeah, we'll cover that. Um, okie dokie. And close that up on the bottom. And let's see, we'll throw some tentacles on here. Let's see, starts from here, works its way around. And uh, at drawing other people's cartoons, um, it also helps me to uh, um, try to keep it simple. Uh, a lot of my artwork gets a little too complicated, a little too busy. And um, a few simple lines, a few simple, uh, you know, well-placed uh, details, uh, you know, helps out a lot and then it, it you realize that this is what they needed to do to um, put this cartoon out you know they had to keep it simple something that people could draw over and over again really super fast okay make sure I got everything here I'm not missing anything because I'm gonna run through with my eraser and start erasing Let's see. I'm just going all the way around the perimeter here. And I'll just give a thicker outline around the body here. All right. So we now have our little racy Jessica Rabbit as Ursula. And if I wanted to reduce the... Uh, the racy factor, I can always just like throw the uh, the bodice part on here. And then on a smaller piece of paper, let me go ahead and erase. I gotta wait for this stuff to dry just a bit. Yeah, um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Much smaller. Um, I've got this. And then I'll go ahead and either draw on this one or I'll draw on uh, this one right here, the Bristol. I think I want to have one of my um, one of my books just be uh, nothing but uh, live stream stuff, you know, stuff that I've done on screen, and then it'll be kind of like a uh, what's it called, a refresher? No. A, a book tour, I guess. Oh, this is going to be fun to color. Um, this one I might end up coloring um, uh, in a speed video. Um, I got to decide what would look better. Um, I'm trying to get this whole damn thing in the picture. It's almost impossible. <laughs> uh, okay. 
There we go. And let's bring this around. Let's see, and we'll spin this. Make sure I'm spinning it in the right direction. Well, I had to turn it the other way. There we go. Wolf. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. This is her as Ursula. And let me go ahead and erase some of these lines. I mean, they dry, it dries relatively fast. The Prismacolor um, Premier, uh, I call them pins, but on the packaging, it, it's called a marker, even though they're shaped like pins and they do what pins do. I guess it depends. <laughs> All right. Oh, I spun it backwards. Sorry. Back the other way. And that should get it straight. And we'll bring it up that way. Okay, tilt it a bit further. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to retitle this. <laughs> oh, okay. My three hour live stream. Skip to the end so you can see the end result and whether or not you want to dedicate three hours of your time watching Kim doodle. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I need to... I don't know. Do I want to? Nah, it, it does start way back. His his little spines. Okay, so that was that idea. Um, from Tattooed Hearts. I'm going to go ahead and... Or T-X-T-O Hearts. It looks like tattoo, tattoos. I think it's tight. I like your name. Even though I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so that was one idea. The other idea was to have Jessica as a as the Little Mermaid, still kind of racy. Uh, let's see. Here's the paper. This should be easier to place um, in front of the camera. Uh, let me put my box back down. All right. Let me bring this back up. That way we get the whole thing. Yeah, this is uh, modern technology using a Cricut box. <laughs> I don't even have a Cricut phone. Okay. Um, make sure it's in the camera. And we are golden. Okay. Okay, so now I want to find a Jessica, not Jessica, rabbit, and a bell maybe. Let's see, escape. We'll delete this. We'll delete that. Okay, I want to find a new pose. And let's see, Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid. Uh, I should look up mermaid poses. Uh, maybe something iconic. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Do I have? Oh, here's my coloring book. 
let's see. There, there's got to be like some mermaid, mermaid pictures in here. Oh, this one turned out pretty good. And it's not all over the place. Let's see. So I could do Jessica Rabbit kind of like in this pose. Um, I do like the flowing hair. Let's see. Let's see. I could do her going in the opposite direction. I think there's another picture where she's going in the opposite direction. I think it's a dot to dot. I don't know. Once I start it, it's not going to take that long. And okay, forget about it. We'll use this pose right here. Okay, so the trick was to use uh, Jessica Rabbit looking like Ariel. The little mermaid because she's a redhead and let's see how 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 do i want to do this do, 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 do. Uh, i could have her hair cover it okay let's see so we'll have like little elements of both uh, let's see Maybe I want to find another Jessica Rabbit position. Oh, okay. I think I know what I'm going to do. I think I'll do a Jessica Rabbit pose and do her as the mermaid. Uh, let's see. Okay. This will go pretty fast. I don't know what's going to cover her, her boobs, maybe the hair. We'll have it come back around. Let's see. And I like how Ariel's hair comes out like that. And we'll just have it come back around like that. Like, hello, sailor. 
Let's see, Ariel's not wearing any jewelry. So I don't have to put that on there. Um, but she does. Oh yeah, hello sailor. Let's go ahead and throw a little cap on here. Throw a little anchor here. And I could uh, I could have uh, Roger Rabbit uh, like right here uh, wearing a sailor outfit. I don't need this anymore. I don't think I'm following it. <laughs> Let's see if we can try to get more of the tail in the picture.
da da da. Let's see. I want to try to bring the tail up closer. Do, 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 do. Can I do that? There we go. We'll give it like a, a whole bunch of S shapes here. If I can figure out how to get you probably have bubbles. I can't decide if I want her up on land or if I want her in the water. Let's see, what should I do with this arm here? I could put it behind her. have her hand maybe touching her own hair or something I don't know I, I want to have it oh should I use the fork nah let's see I gotta figure out what to do with her and let's see I could have it come this way like a pinup. Oh, okay. We were going to use seaweed. So we'll have seaweed cover that. And then I could have seaweed. So we'll just have her like in a seaweed bed. Make it work, gosh darn it. And we can have bubbles. I 
I could put like a little thing that says I don't have crabs. And I think her tail, um, I think her tail should be red and glittery, uh, kind of like her, uh, her outfit. That would be funny. Okay, let's fix the boobs here. And this one here. This is her shoulder. This is her arm. Instead of being like a mermaid of Weeky Watchy, it'd be like Weeky Watch Me. <laughs> I think that's what it should be called. We'll just have some like little rays. Okay. Let's see if my pen will work now. Ah, uh, come on now. Work, work, work. to find one other there let's try no there's a brush I don't want to use a brush uh, oh heck I guess I'll use the brush tip 
I just won't use it on the uh, finer areas. I need to work on my line work anyway. I couldn't find um, one of my uh, pens, and when I did find one, it just didn't work. So, uh, let's see, this is more of like a dog dish, so I gotta fix this. We'll just make the anchor a little bit lower.
right, Tattooed Hearts, thank you so much um, for the idea. I love doing pinups. Um, and I love the character Jessica Rabbit. Um, let me see. She has one glove on. She's not Michael Jackson. We'll, have, uh, we'll, we'll give her two gloves. And, um, and I'll show you what the uh, other drawing looked like. Um, it's definitely, uh, it looks like it's about dry. But again, um, in order for it to be like washable, machine washable, um, it needs to cure for three days. So um, here is uh, that Kimikaze uh, picture. And as I'm putting my finger on it, it hasn't uh, done its thing. Um, I also want to try that experiment where we use um, the fabric medium to see if that'll keep it in place um, and use that as a uh, sealant instead of uh, using Mod Podge because when you use Mod Podge, you can already see uh, the color differences. Uh, like this is uh, toned a darker gray and this is white and no matter how um, careful I was it still toned uh, the fabric so if I wanted to once it's done I can always go back over it with um, a not colored pencil but a uh, fabric marker and I have like oh I'm sorry let me bring it back down um, and I have my sealed image um, again, thank you guys so much for watching and, and popping by and saying hi on uh, this lovely, lovely Sunday. And um, I will be putting out uh, more videos. I will do a follow-up to this one where um, uh, you can see the end result and uh, what it looks like after uh, the three days it had cured and... I'll show, I'll show you what it looks like when it's pulled out of a washer. And um, also, uh, here's the other one that I was working on. Um, and I'll also show um, how this one turned out as well. Uh, I have confidence that it's not going to wash out because of a previous video that I did uh, with this one right here. Um, uh, Norman Reedus, who just you know, started this whole thing for me. So, um, I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I might even add to this one because it's just, I like it. It turned out a lot better than I expected it to. And now that it's dry, um, I don't have to keep it in the box anymore. I'm not afraid that it's going to, um, contact the other side like a ghost. <laughs> And um, I will definitely show you guys um, the end result. I'll see you in a few days on that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you want to catch uh, some of my other videos and anything that's up and coming. Um, if you have any suggestions for um, an idea, uh, just let me know and um, I might even be able to, uh, to draw it on screen. All right, uh, you guys have a great one. And eventually I'm going to set up a Patreon where I can give away these things. So like every month um, or every few days or whatever, I'll give these out to uh, people who uh, subscribe and uh, contribute like more than the average bear or something like that. But anyway, uh, you guys have a great one and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Um,